When in San Francisco, the number one cuisine on everybody's list is seafood, fresh and live caught from the nearby Pacific. Today, we are going to review four of the best seafood spots in the city. Every morning, local fishermen head out into the bay and by breakfast, fresh, fresh seafood is available on our plates to enjoy. In the spring through fall, anchovies, halibut, ling cod, albacore tuna, sablefish, sand dab, sea bass, petrel sole, and squid are plentiful. In the winter, it's time for Dungeness crab, California spiny lobster, mackerel, and herring. Year round, there's rockfish, sardines, and farmed trout, mussels, clams, abalones, and of course, oysters. Here's four of the top places in the city where you can go to to sample these fruits of the ocean for a relatively reasonable cost. We're gonna take a little walk now down to the Ferry Building. Hog Island Oyster is the hot seafood spot in the city right now. They raise their own oysters and shellfish up on their farm in Tomales Bay. The protected inlet is rich in plankton and is perfect for cultivating shellfish. Honestly, if you have access to a car, drive up there and eat on the farm. It's an experience not to be missed. I've got a video that I've made of my visit up there that I'll attach to the end of this video. But if you can't make it up there, an acceptable alternative is to eat here at their restaurant in the Ferry Building. They mainly cultivate Pacific Sweetwaters, but will occasionally also have Atlantics, the French Baylons, Japanese Kumamotos, as well as Manila clams and Mediterranean mussels. In addition, this raw oyster bar will also import oysters from other parts of the Pacific, as well as from the Atlantic. We start first with a sample plate of today's raw oyster offerings. Gotta give it a little good squirt of lemon juice. And definitely use the tasty vinaigrette with herbs. Let's start first with the Sweetwater Pacific. This is sort of what uh, Hog Island Oyster is known for. And this is a pretty prevalent uh, crop uh, up here in Northern California. Super yummy, super fresh, beautifully sweet, no aftertaste whatsoever. Okay, next is the Kumamoto, and this is also raised seasonally at Hog Island Oysters Farm. You won't always get this on the menu, so it's very special when you do. That's beautiful, slightly more tart than the sweet waters. It's got much stronger ocean taste to it. So next we're gonna try the Peel Passage, which is from Washington. And it's a tiny little oyster. It's got this great, meaty quality to it. Probably eats a little bit more like the Kumamoto. This next big boy is from Disco Hama, which is from the Discovery Bay region of Washington. Delicious, very succulent, very mild in flavor. The meat is very tender and it's got this velvety texture to it that is awesome. This next one is called Wealthy and it's from the Cape Cod region of Massachusetts. That's also really beautiful. It's uh, slightly salty and it's got sort of a crisp texture to it. Very, very flavorful. Does not have at all that oyster aftertaste that you normally get from some of the Pacific oysters around here. And finally, we've got the Widow's Hole from Greenport, New York. It's another Atlantic oyster. That one's super unique. It's slightly tart in flavor. Like the Cape Cod oyster, it's slightly crunchy in its texture. These barbecue grilled oysters are my personal favorite and they're a specialty of Hog Island. The most popular flavor is actually the Chipotle bourbon, but I've decided to branch out a little and try this uh, pepper flavor. Chin chin. So spectacular. Those are hot off the grill. They've got this awesome, delicate, smoky quality to them and I love the heat from the peppers. Now, the oysters that they typically use for these are the big boys, and so they're gonna be really fleshy and very juicy. Keep that in mind when you order this. For those who don't like oysters, there's a menu of other seafood and salad items. There's always a seafood chowder on the menu, and today they've got a special halibut and a rock cod. That was a great starter. Next stop, Knob Hill. Swan Oyster Depot is an institution in San Francisco and has been around for over a hundred years. It was started around the turn of the century, originally as an open-air market, which was then later destroyed by the Great Earthquake, uh, and then opened up here in this location in 1912. It's now owned and run by the San Chimino brothers, whose dad bought out the place in 1946, and it's 
definitely an extended family affair behind the counter. It's so good, it's the favorite of foodie greats like Anthony Bourdain and Michael Mina. This is strictly a no frills counter bar and it's only open for lunch from 10.30 to 5.30. Although the market portion is open at 8.30 if you want to take to go. And they only take cash, so hit the ATM before you come. And there's some awesome hooks here. Hanging up your bag. So what to order here? The real foodies will recommend the crab back, which is pretty much crab brains and guts that are swimming in a broth. Or get the uni. Traditionalists recommend the smoked fish platter or the fresh shucked oysters. Today, we're gonna try things off their secret menu. Let's start with the live caught uni, which sells out fast. You can only purchase an entire animal, which is the equivalent of five sushi pieces. Okay, I'm going in. Oh my gosh, that is so delicious. It's very creamy and super firm because it is so fresh. That first beautiful taste on the tongue is a little bit like oyster. Taste of the sea and there's absolutely no aftertaste to it. If you want, they'll give you a little bit of soy sauce and wasabi with it, but I don't really think you need it. So I also got the crab samphamum over here. Beautiful. And these are just cooked crab claws that are laid out in sort of a chrysanthemum pattern. They come in two sizes, small and large. And for dipping, I forewent the Louis sauce and the regular cocktail sauce. And I got this. It's something special. This is the real deal. This is a house-made olive oil vinaigrette that uh, also includes Dijon mustard and crab fat. Yep, that's the secret ingredient. That is really delicious. The crab is so fresh and it's not overcooked. The meat is still really firm and tender. I love this dressing. There is a heck ton of Dijon mustard in it, so it's definitely got that bite to it. There's all sorts of really wonderful chunky pieces of crab fat in it. it tastes delicious. Okay, now we're gonna head to the mission. Here we are. This gem is a local secret. You definitely won't find any tourists here. The Woodhouse Fish Company was started in 2006 by the McNevin brothers, who come from a pretty esteemed restaurant family. Their parents own Buck's Restaurant in Woodside, which is known as the hot VC spot in Silicon Valley, where billion dollar deals are made. The McNevin brothers worked there as teens and then decided to pool their collective experience together to open up a couple of casual seafood eateries up here in the city. The focus of both this location in DeBose Triangle and a second storefront in Japantown is on New England style fare. The menu is pretty pared down and while seafood in general is pretty expensive, they try to keep the prices here reasonable. This joint is best known for Dollar Oyster Tuesdays, which they source from a farm up in Tamales Bay. At one point, the patrons started pounding them, they were so cheap, and record breakers get their name on the wall. The current reigning champ is a guy named Steve Pratt, who ate 204 of them. So what else is good? Patrons recommend the Dungeness Crab Roll. It's like a New England style lobster roll with an SF twist to it. You can get a regular for 23 bucks or double the amount of crab and get a large for 38. Given that this is the SF version, the roll has to be a sourdough, buttered on the outside and on the inside. The crab meat is also loaded with a ton of butter. Yum! That's super delicious. The crab on the inside is very fresh and shredded, and there's very little seasoning on it, sprinkled on the top with a bit of chai. And that sourdough goes perfectly. It's slightly toasted on the outside, so it's soft on the inside and a little bit crispy on the outside. And the whole thing comes out nice and piping hot. The thing comes with a side of shoestring fries. There's also a side of coleslaw, which I love. The cabbage is nice and fresh and crispy, and it's only very lightly seasoned with a touch of onions. Pro tip, if the crab isn't buttery enough for you, you can ask for a little bit of clarified butter on the side. The chipino here for 33 bucks is also excellent. I've saved the best for last. We're gonna finish off this list with one of my favorites. Just around the corner from Alamo Square Park and the famous Painted Ladies is Bar Crudo. The bar itself was opened in 2005 by twin brothers Mike and Tim Silvera, 
who specialize in crudo, which is Italian for raw. There's an impressive list of oysters plus shellfish, and the crudo plates cover seasonal fish dressed in inventive ways. There's also a small menu of hot offerings that include seafood chowder and whole branzino that are equally as delicious. Here's an insider tip. Come during happy hour, straight when they open at five o'clock for discounts on some of their more popular items. Oysters and mussels are $1.50 each, and seafood chowder is eight bucks. I'm gonna start with a crudo sampler plate. There's a butterfish with fennel, blood orange, black garlic, and mint, a scallop with persimmon, pomegranate, and citrus fan, a tombo tuna with parsnip, pear, aleppo, prosciutto, and hazelnuts, and an arctic char with horseradish, creme fraiche, tobiko, wasabi, and dill. We'll start first with a butterfish. That's so delicious. The fish literally melts in your mouth and it's accented with these beautiful flavors of fresh fennel and orange. Really highlights the mellow flavor of the butterfish. Next, let's try the scallops. Scallops are my absolute favorite thing to eat raw. These ones are really special. The coconut flavoring gives it a sort of a tropical vibe, but it's not so much that it's overpowering. And I love that little crunchiness that you get from the pomegranate. Let's try the tuna tambo now. Oh, super yummy. The tuna is definitely a firmer fish and the pear gives it this slightly sweet flavor that I just love. Then you got this great crunchy hazelnut to follow it up. Finally, the arctic char. This is almost too beautiful to eat, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Awesome, that was the firmest fish out of all of them and it has that sort of traditional Japanese taste with the wasabi and the tobiko. But I love the addition of the creme fraiche, which really makes it very creamy and smooth. And finally, I'm gonna finish off with the rock cod tacos, which are on the happy hour menu for 11 bucks. There's a bit of pickled red onion, some arugula, some queso fresco, and salsa under the fried fish. I'm gonna dig in. Fantastic. The rock cod is very flaky, very light. The salsa adds a really nice bite to it. And then you get sort of this contrast from the crunchiness of the arugula. This is really close to an authentic Mexican taco in taste. Now, not all the fish here today is local. It's winter time. But if that's important to you, just ask and they can point you in the right direction. A couple of years ago, the Salveras opened up a Guerneville outpost called Seaside Metal. So if you're ever up in Sonoma, be sure to go and check it out. Now, if you guys do get stuck at Fisherman's Wharf and want a really good seafood house, try Fog Harbor Fish House. It's not the cheapest, but it is locally sourced and sustainably fished. Plus, they have the Dungeness Crab Rolls here. And there you have it, some of San Francisco's freshest and tastiest seafood offerings. Whether it's raw or grilled, you really can't go wrong. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace.